Hi YouTubers and welcome back to my sustainable energy channel. This is the third part of a four part series and today I'd like to share some of my experiences, uh, some of the mistakes I've made and some of the things I've discovered that might help you in your choice of getting off the grid. First and foremost, uh, if you look back at some of my previous videos, you'll see that I started with a really small system with a hybrid inverter, the smallest, simplest uh, configuration possible to help me get through uh, power outages and take myself a little bit off the grid. That whole um, system has evolved over the last five years and this is feeding back to you now on what I've actually settled with, with as the, the ultimate um, system for myself. Um, there's a lot of misunderstanding in the terminology around some of the Victron products. Um, certainly one of the things that I'd never understood despite having a mate that's a Victron distributor is that these devices are quite different in their architecture to hybrid inverters. So simply put, without getting into too much technical jargon, a hybrid inverter is, is a great entry uh, into getting off the grid and very versatile. But they really work like a UPS. They switch between battery and uh, utility uh, using relays. A Victron system can actually blend uh, power from different sources. So if you have a load of three kilowatts and you have one kilowatt from solar, one kilowatt from battery, and one kilowatt from grid, it can actually blend those, uh, those supplies so that you, in, in effect, can service a three kVA load uh, but only having uh, one kVA of solar or, or one kVA of battery. So it really is um, that ability to mix and blend um, the energy sources that gives it huge versatility. And quite frankly, what um, most people are, are saying, they'd love to have a Victron, but they know it's considerably more expensive than a, a small Taiwanese hybrid inverter. Um, and they both have their place, but uh, it was also my misunderstanding. So I had a 5 kVA um, hybrid inverter, and in fact I had two at the end of my project, if you look at my previous videos, uh, were combined together, giving me a sort of 10 kilowatts of, of capability. And I wanted that because I wanted to charge my EV uh, electric vehicle at some point in time. But um, I also realized that there's a lot of inefficiency um, in some of those hybrid solutions. So I looked at a Victron alternative, and of course a 10 kVA Victron solution is, is, is substantially expensive. Um, but what I never realized is you don't need the same capacity. You're not comparing apples to apples. So if we just look at a 5 kVA uh, inverter in a hybrid and in a Victron environment, um, because Victron has a lot of uh, this capability of blending its, its, its power inputs, and because the device can actually handle over voltage or over use, over current draw, for quite a substantial period of time, like 30 minutes, it can handle it, sort of double the, the, the drain. Um, that gives it huge versatility, because most of the time we're specking our inverters to cope with these short bursts of excessive loads. Um, and if they are short and they, they are excessive and you can contain them within a smaller unit like, like a Victron, it means you can reduce the capital cost by purchasing a smaller inverter that does the job of a larger inverter. And that um, never really came across uh, to me in the, in the beginning. The other component that I missed completely, and uh, maybe you have discovered yourself, is that if you add an energy meter to a Victron installation or uh, like a CT clamp, you can measure the actual current coming in from the grid. The system can really operate dynamically and can balance loads between battery and solar and service loads that are non-critical loads that are connected to your home. And that's amazingly uh, beneficial because you don't need to go and rewire your whole house. If you have a surplus of energy available um, with an energy meter and using the Victron ESS um, system, energy storage system, you can actually service those loads from surplus solar without having to go and reconfigure your entire environment. So yes, you still need to plan your installation and you need to have uh, your critical loads serviced in the event of, a, of an outage um, and in the event of, of low battery. You obviously want things like your internet and your fridge and your, your low kind of current uh, drainage critical um, things to work first. But uh, when there is surplus solar, you certainly want to service those loads so you're not servicing them from the grid. And I'll get into that in more detail when I do a specific um, uh, program, uh, YouTube channel program on just how the energy meter changes the functionality of the installation dramatically, reduces the price um, uh, in terms of your usage and, um, and leverages off the investment. 
So um, that's, those are one of the things that I've discovered. So this is the, the MultiPlus um, 2GX that I ended up with. Uh, this now runs my whole household. And the other thing that it runs is it now charges my EV. So I have a Zappi charger that I acquired um, from the UK uh, through a company called My Energy. They're one of the only solar um, enabled uh, electric vehicle chargers that I know about. So it can channel surplus solar energy into my electric vehicle and that's an absolute winner for me. It means I've got effectively a massive battery on wheels in my installation um, that I can su uh, dump surplus uh, power to. So those are, are considerations that I'd encourage you to explore them. There are many videos out there on, on the, in the Victron um, environment. And um, this has really kind of inspired me. And, and uh, in fact, it's actually become a full-time job now, helping other people and, and consulting and energy management uh, to get off the grid and to manage their energy more efficiently. So I've actually done a number of installations now with the help of, of some of my colleagues and some other experts. Um, in optimizing usage of existing installations that don't use an energy meter to dynamically balance the, the loads. So I hope you find this uh, interesting and uh, look out for additional series, uh, additional um, YouTube videos on these specific topics and uh, enjoy being off the grid.